photographer Mark Hobson enjoys capturing the pristine, natural views of the Adirondacks. But a few of his images warn us about a less than pristine possibility for the Adirondack Park. To me, this scene is a nightmare. Uh, you know, the idea that that sort of development, uh, which involves the destruction of part of the natural world in this area, uh, to be honest, scares the heck out of me. Hobson credits the Adirondack Park Agency, or APA, for enforcing the protection of the region so he can celebrate the integration of people, towns, and the natural world in his photos. Well, without the protection of the APA, you know, development would run rampant. Uh, there are those who would, in a sense, to see the Adirondacks paved over, as you will, you know, if you will. Um, for them, it's about development and getting as much financial gain from what we have as opposed to preserving it for future generations. In general, Hobson favors what he calls straight photography, images not overly manipulated by Photoshop, that represent what the camera saw. One day, however, he decided to do an experiment with Photoshop. He wanted to construct a made-up scene, using elements from his own photos he had stored in his extensive photo collection. I just wanted to see how well I could create a picture that was not real. It took about 16 different photos and four days on the computer to create this composited image. We see the lower portions of Whiteface and uh, this urban industrial parking lot, roadway, buildings in the foreground. Um, I don't know of anyone frankly, who would want to see that at the base of Whiteface. Uh, although there are those <laughs> who, after seeing the photograph, have asked me, so are you for or against the APA? Uh, I, you know, I, I thought, I think I've made it obvious in my photos that I, I'm very much in favor of what the APA does. Uh, the foreground parking lot is actually downtown Rochester. Uh, there was some construction in the parking lot. I took out the actual features of that repair and substituted a view of the flume in Wilmington, uh, making it look as though the cones were protecting someone from falling into the bowels of the earth. The artist says although he doesn't like the vision depicted in the image, he appreciates the technical results after four days of work. It said something to me, and as I showed it to a few people, it said something to them. Uh, interestingly enough, some of them responded in a fashion that they actually thought it was a real photo. Where did you stand when you took this? Where is that highway? You know, th these are people who have lived here all their lives, should have known better. But, um, and that said to me, I've, I've done what I wanted to do. I've created a pure fantasy that came across as real, uh, in part, in large part, because that it was the point of the exercise, to make real the threat to the forever wild Adirondacks. To reflect his feelings about the threat of development destroying natural beauty, he placed two motifs in the image. The first is orange construction cones, signifying development. The other is a tombstone, and that's about death, <laughs> uh, the end of something, and I thought that element would definitely convey my feelings on, on this type of development. This photo, intended merely as a one-time experiment, sparked a series of nine photos when a gallery director asked Hobson for a show of similar works. One of the beauties of the Adirondacks is, are the wilderness waterways, and paddling those is just an exquisite experience. Uh, there are no man-made objects. There are, it's you, the wilderness, and the wildlife. Were development to run rampant, Paddling on an Adirondack River might not be any different than paddling down the Hudson River between New Jersey and Manhattan. In this photo, I expanded on my idea of death. The gravestone is in there, 
but also in the far distance on the mountaintops are uh, cemetery, huge cemetery edifices that uh, I photographed in Syracuse, New York. Um, the elements here, the street scene with uh, the cars is again Rochester. And I've been asked repeatedly, where did you get all the vintage cars? Well, they weren't vintage at that time, <laughs> but um, that's what they appear to be. Uh, but, and that worked out well because uh, a vintage car, if you were to see one today, is a preserved car. And uh, I introduced, you know, I, I picked this particular scene because of that aspect. I thought it played well into the idea of preservation. Why do we want to preserve cars but not the natural world? To me it seems inconsistent. These photos, when they're viewed together in a gallery or a book, uh, tend to come across as complex, which the issue of preservation is. Uh, people are amazed that these are not real photographs to the point in a couple exhibits, I have had to include a photo of the original unretouched or uncomposited scene to drive that point home. Um, so it, in the end, it comes across as kind of a sense of wonder and bewilderment, which again, is part of what I'm trying to get across. Spotlight segments are funded in part by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.